Welcome to The Naomi Show. Hi there and welcome to the show. Now, in our last episode, I was talking to psychologist John Aiken about people who are attracted to people who are unavailable and how destructive that is in our relationships. Let's just recap. What does it do when you're going after people who are unavailable? Well, it basically puts you in a state of great unease because you don't know where you stand. Mm. And the types we're talking about here, Naomi, they might be married or attached, too young or too old, they travel too much or they party too much, or uh, they're those people that have come out of a relationship, they're hung up, they're not really looking for anything and so they can't give you a commitment. Okay, so what can you do to break that pattern of going after these people who are clearly wrong for you? Yeah, well the first thing, and uh, lots of singles won't like it, but the first thing you've got to do is get rid of the bad ones. If you are sitting there now listening to this going, oh well I am kind of interested in a guy who's already seeing someone else, you've got to dump the bad ones, yeah. cut them out of your life. And that means no more texts, emails, bumping into them at the same bars or clubs, you've got to get them out of your life. And that includes the guys or the girls who keep you waiting, yep. won't give you any kind of commitment, yep. won't move forward on things. That's right. Absolutely. So the, the funny thing is, you know, people often say to me, oh, John, um, you know, I, I wondered early on, because they, they said to me, I'm not really looking for a relationship right now. What does that mean? Well, what it means is <laughs> not they're right. not wanting to go out with you, because the last thing you want to hear from someone is that very thing. Yeah. So if you have heard that, or if you're in a relationship or dating someone who's not able to give you commitment, get rid of them now. Okay. The second step is understand the warning signs, identify them. Look back on the, the past people that you've dated and say to yourself, what are some of the signs that they were unavailable? Did they travel too much? Mm -hmm. Were they people that were you know, uh, not over their ex? Yeah. Uh, were they into drugs and alcohol and just partied hard all the time? Yeah. You know, or were they someone who had a 35 or should I say 15 year age gap? You know, what's, what are the key signs here that I need to say, right, you've got that, I'm moving on. I'm not going anywhere near yeah. you. So once you've got those warning signs, you then start looking at breaking habits. So if you're meeting guys, Naomi, for instance, at uh, a particular club or um, uh, after work drinks and they are the same type of guys that aren't going to give you commitment, then what you've got to do is you've got to say, I'm breaking that pattern. Okay. So I'm not going to the tennis club on a Friday night anymore. Or okay. those work drinks, I'm not going to do that. And if you are doing things yourself at those work drinks, for instance, you might be drinking too much or uh, staying out way too late and ending up in the same pattern, yep. then you break that pattern. Okay. So you're thinking about how, what am I doing that lets these wrong types in and what am I going to do differently? Okay. What can you do after that? Then what you're doing is you're saying, okay, if I've broken the patterns and I know the warning signs and I got rid of the bad ones, now let's focus on the good ones. What do I want in my ideal partner? Yeah. So if I said to you, Naomi, you know, what's one trait that you really would like in an ideal partner? What would that be? I can think of a couple. There's honesty good sense of humour, just to, to get me started. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, those are really important ones. So what you're doing there, and I reckon everyone should have a top five. You don't want a list of 30, because mm. obviously you're going to rule everybody out. Yeah. Uh, and I've met people like that, too picky. You know, but if you've got a good, strong top five. That's a balance though, isn't it? I mean, you're saying, fight, talk about your ideal partner. Well, a lot of us girls will go, right, here's the list. Yeah, that's right. And absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And of course, if you're in that state where you're a highly anxious person with a list of 30 yeah. uh, criteria, then you're going to stay single. So you think five sort of I really key elements. Think of your five top, and it might be you know, what their sense of humour, but it might be their ambition, mm -hmm. uh, what they're like as parents. Sex and affection can yes. be really important. Yeah, and I you'll think know, affection is what yeah. you need to be matched there, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So once you've got your ideal, then what you do is you start moving towards that person. And keep checking in. If you're doing anything that moves you away from that type of ideal person, stop doing it. But what do you say to those people who say, look, I'm attracted to these kind of dangerous, difficult types of people. Yeah. I don't find the others attractive. Yeah. You know, what can I do about changing the fact that I'm not really attracted to people who are well, so nurturing and kind? And that's right. What do you do about that? Well, the first thing I'd say is if you want a long-term relationship, then you have to keep reminding yourself that going after these attractive, unavailable types is not going to work. Mm. So constantly telling yourself, that is hurting me. Yep. And then the second thing I'd say, and this relates to the fifth point about how to break this pattern, is you need to build your self-worth up. Because yep. often going after unavailable types that hurt you is a good indication that you're not feeling good about yourself. 
on top of that, it can actually lower your self-esteem. Absolutely. Too, it can be terrible on your self-esteem. Constantly following someone around. Yeah. So not only do you keep reminding yourself that that's hurting you, but you also start building up your self-worth. And that's the, 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 that's the fifth part of all of this. You need to be engaging with your friends, getting into your exercise, your health, your diet, uh, looking at your interests and hobbies, and making sure that you're putting yourself first. Uh, because at the end of the day, if someone comes in and says, I keep get, uh, attracting, getting attracted to the, the wrong types that don't treat me well, essentially what they're saying is, I'm not, I don't like myself, I don't value myself right now, mm -hmm. and this is the only person I think I'm worth, that I deserve. Which is really sad. Hmm. So picking up your self-worth yep. is going to literally break that pattern. It's going to repel them rather than bring them close. Okay, that is great advice. And if you want to follow up on more of that, Get John's book. I thoroughly recommend it. It's called Accidentally Single. It's fantastic. A great read. The it's got 15 a mistakes that ruin romance and yeah. how to avoid That's them. That's right. And it's got a couple of personal stories sprinkled throughout. So just so that people know that we've all been there. Yep. And we can all make these mistakes without knowing it. And the first part is becoming aware and then breaking them. Okay. Thank you, John. That's fantastic. And we look forward to your company next time. Your love life, let's talk about it at naomishow.com.